On March 30th, 2017, Companies Committed to Kids, a Canadian nonprofit, dissolved after 27 years of running informational campaigns. The announcement signaled the end of an iconic era in Canadian children's broadcasting. The organization produced nearly 40 advertisements that all went on to become staples of before and after school programming on networks like Teletoon and YTV. But back then, they went by a different name. A message from concerned children's advertisers. Companies Committed to Kids was founded in February of 1990 as Concerned Children's Advertisers, or CCA, by then-manager of Optimedia Canada, Sonny Boot, and president of Global Television, David Mintz. Any Canadian born between the late 80s and early 2000s would instantly recognize CCA's exclamation mark logo. In a 1996 article with Strategy Magazine, Mintz recounted CCA's inception, saying, quote, there should be something we in the business of buying or selling children's advertising could do to further augment the good citizenship aspect of this segment of the media world. One thing led to another, with the final result an assemblage of all the major advertisers along with Global and later YTV and Baton. The initial group of advertisers that gathered together included McDonald's, General Mills, Fisher Price, Irwin Toys, Hasbro, Quaker Oats, and General Foods. A name for the organization was debated at our first meeting, and the one chosen became Concerned Children's Advertisers." End quote. CCA would also partner with a number of different ad agencies and studios to produce their public service announcements, such as FCB Canada, Saatchi and Saatchi, Cassette, and Chorus Entertainment. In the early 90s, many Gen X Canadians became parents for the first time, and the cultural landscape was subject to rapid change. The latchkey generation grew to raise their children in a way that mirrored their own childhoods, in front of the television. So I always saw these ads as a mix between funny and weird and sometimes straight up scary. And while most of them did just air specifically in Canada, I know a few of them did make their way down to the United States. So for some of you, this will be a brand new experience, and for others, this will be a trip down memory lane. Now unfortunately, not all of these ads are archived online, and some of them aren't even in the best of quality. And with the organization no longer around, it's kind of doubtful we're ever going to see some of these ads the way that they were originally broadcast. The earliest public service announcements from CCA reflected the lasting North American parental concerns of the 1980s, primarily the war on drugs, substance abuse being chief among the so-called parents' worst nightmares. The challenge was finding a way to educate children, most often of very different age groups, about the contemporary fears of substance abuse. As such, concerned children's advertisers sought to appeal through a variety of strategies, including scaring the heck out of kids. One of the first ads, Brain, began circulating during commercial blocks in 1990, visualizing permanent damage resulting from drug use. Your brain is a marvel of technology. But when you take drugs, you alter your brain. You change thinking patterns. You distort perception. And eventually, your brain just won't be the same. Think about it while well, you still can. Another, entitled Crack, aired alongside it. Ever wonder what a bag of crack looks like? In the last two years, over 5,000 people in Canada and the U.S. have died from using crack or cocaine. Do yourself a favor. Think about it. However, other advertisements took a lighter approach. Be True to You asserted a casual tone when appealing to teenagers, as it would have likely been ignored if its target audience felt they were being talked down to. I really don't get the big deal about drinking and drugs. It's like a lot of people don't give us any credit. Just because we're young, it doesn't mean we're stupid. I know what I want and what matters to me, and I'm not going to risk blowing it. It doesn't mean I'll never drink. It just means I'll be smart about it. In an effort to appeal to even younger demographics, some ads would prompt the viewer to engage in a conversation with their parents or guardians. The often parodied drug rap also began airing in 1990, with its earworm chorus cementing itself in the memories of a generation. Drugs, drugs, drugs. 
Still, concerned children's advertisers continued to use fear as negative reinforcement, in at least one instance, censoring an ad for disturbing imagery. 1993's Hip Choice begins with two childlike puppets encountering a drug pusher in an alleyway. When he offers his product, a series of images depicting deceased celebrities flash across the screen. The child characters then decline his offer and leave while the drug pusher nods at the audience. However, the original version of this ad ends differently, instead concluding with the drug pusher removing his sunglasses to reveal a shocking face. Nah, this joke's not worth the time. A message from Concerned Children's Advertisers. So I feel like it's easy to criticize these now with the hindsight and the technology that we have available nowadays, uh, but more than anything, I think that these ads are like a window into the past in terms of culture and nostalgia. It's like being a kid again in a weird way. Others that debuted during this time had similar themes and included Mimic, Someone's watching your every action. Story time. Careful, baby, some mushrooms are not for raccoons. And labyrinth. Come on, what do you do when you find the needle? Keep it along, tell a teacher. The Trap from 1993 featured two mouse puppets encountering a mouse trap, with one warning the other about the potential danger they face. Hey, hey, don't touch it if you don't know what it is. Why? What's wrong? Well, I'm not sure. I just think that if we don't really know what it is, we shouldn't touch it. It might hurt us. Well, then what should we do? I know that some things are okay, and some things are not. And I think if we don't know, we should ask. Ask who? Somebody who knows about stuff like this. Oh, you mean like Mom or Uncle Fred? Yeah, or somebody else we trust. We don't have to be afraid, but we do have to be careful. Just because somebody leaves something lying around doesn't mean it's okay for us to play with. I actually find it interesting that The Trap was produced by Radical Sheep Productions. Uh, they're probably better known for The Big Comfy Couch. In fact, this mouse puppet from The Trap was later reused in a 1994 episode of The Big Comfy Couch, Season 3, Episode 3, Clownus Interrupt Us. Rutherford Mouse lived in a house with 14 sisters and brothers. Mice everywhere on the ceiling and stairs. This mouse house was like no other. But perhaps the best known of this era was intended for preschoolers, and a tune that became etched in the lexicon of Canadian parents. Don't you put it in your mouth, don't you put it in your mouth, don't you stuff it in your face, don't stuff it in your face, though it might look good to eat, though it might look good to eat, and it might look good to taste, and it might look good to taste, you could get sick, Yuck. real quick, Yuck. real sick. This is Don't Put It In Your Mouth. It was released in 1992, and it generally aired as a 60 second spot featuring two blue puppets and a chorus of other characters singing about the dangers of eating things not meant to be eaten. But did you know there was a less common two minute version? And this included an extended introduction and ending. Hi, kid. Why are we on television anyway? We're here to tell a little story about why you shouldn't put things into your mouth when you don't know what they are and why you should never take anything a stranger tries to give you. Why not? Because if you ate somebody else's medicine, some bad food, or some poison, you could get very sick. <gasps> Even speaking as somebody who grew up while these were playing on TV, I don't feel like the effect always came across as intended. Uh, I always felt like they were shielding us from a world that we were yet to understand, and sometimes that was the scariest part. In a 2016 interview with Vice, then-President Bev Deeth said, quote, Don't put it in your mouth, the Muppet one? I'm embarrassed to say, I honestly can't even speak to that one because that's not something that relates to what we do now. We look toward PSAs that messages are still relevant today, that have evolved with the times. End quote. And with that, the latter half of the decade marked a shift away from using scary imagery and focusing on topics like substance abuse, instead moving toward positivity and talking about peer pressure. We Are Girls and Boutique focused on self-esteem and body image among girls. Why let someone else decide who you should be? While others, such as Choose, emphasize the importance of agency and making smart decisions. You can choose to run wide on You can choose not to watch. It was also around this time that CCA began to address television itself. 
I think I saw these ones the most. They seem to play at almost every commercial block, and this next one in particular is so burned into the memory receptacles of my brain I still have it memorized over 20 years later. Hey, what you watching? Me? I'm just a TV. I mean, I'm not even human. You, you've got the remote control. You can change channels if you don't like what you're watching. You can flick me on and off, and on and off, and whoa, whoa, I'm getting dizzy. This one is called Smart As You, and it premiered in 1997. In it, a talking television emphasizes developing healthy TV watching habits, including the choice young viewers have in what they consume. Given that today, everyone carries a supercomputer in their pockets with a whole wealth of entertainment from Netflix to Spotify to YouTube, you could say this message is either now more important than ever or that it's seriously dated. You can actually see a couple instances of why TV programming appear during this ad. Here's Reboot and uh, Uh Oh, and right here is PJ Katie, that's PJ like DJ, YTV used to call their hosts uh, program jockeys. And she's here with Fez from the Fuzz Paws. For anyone who remembers, these were the hosts of Treehouse uh, back before it got its own channel, when it was still a YTV programming block. Another, in a similar, albeit less zany vein, was this ad about a hippo that lives in your house. The North American House Hippo is found throughout Canada and the eastern United States. House hippos are very timid creatures and are rarely seen, but they will defend their territory if provoked. So this ad stresses the importance of treating mass media with curiosity and skepticism, and not to trust information just because it was shown on TV. That looked really real, but you knew it couldn't be true, didn't you? That's why it's good to think about what you're watching on TV and ask questions, kind of like you just did. The ad went on to win the 1999 Golden Marble Award for Best Public Service Advertising. Interestingly, I can't seem to find the actual name of this ad. Uh, the old CCA website says House Hippo, and uh, the Vice article calls it Jake the House Hippo, and the Kid Screen article listing the 1999 Golden Marble Award winners calls it uh, the hidden world of the House Hippo, so who knows? There's actually a section of their old website where kids could read about the behind the scenes on the House Hippo commercial. And this TV and Me section of their website is actually pretty interesting with sections for both parents and educators. Over here in the parents section we can see an activity where kids could pick out sound effects and supposedly mix their own House Hippo commercial. However, it's all pre-mixed, so uh, here's the sleepy narration with the cartoon sound effects. House hippos are very timid creatures and are rarely seen. Moving over to the educators section, we can see that a bunch of these PSAs had lesson plans attached to them. Here's the one for Don't Put It In Your Mouth. And that's because TV and Me launched with a VHS tape, clips from which I've been showing throughout the episode. You can find the whole thing on YouTube. I'll link it in the description. In 2019, media literacy organization Media Smarts launched a successor to the commercial, depicting the house hippo in a modern home and cautioning the audience about fake news. Here's another great ad from around the same time. It's called What's Your Thing? What's your thing? Bugs. And I think this really stands out from the others. It's all about finding your passion in life, no matter how weird it is. Whether it's magic, or bugs, or... My thing's sound effects. Here's a T-Rex. <laughs> Or, or that. In 2001, CCA launched Stay Fit Cause You'll Never Know, a campaign directed at youth fitness working with Cassette to produce a trilogy of ads. The Chase features three girls following a boy until he runs out of breath, where they catch up and kiss him. Ice Scream shows a group of kids chasing after an ice cream truck, unable to get there before it drives off. And in Blown Away, a boy leaves a convenience store and opens up a pack of Pokemon cards. A look of awe crosses his face when he sees a card he wants, only for the wind to snatch it from his hands. It's gone before he can reach it. As far as I can tell, these ads were filmed in the Weston neighborhood of Toronto. In fact, uh, here is the convenience store from the ad Blown Away at the corner of King Street and Elm Street. And thanks to Google Street View, we can actually see uh, how it looked throughout the years. 
But that's not the only thing that changed. After producing a series of ads about bullying, CCA would embark on what would ultimately be one of their final projects, the Long Live Kids campaign, which was developed with British Columbia's Knowledge Network. This also came with a website, and while it doesn't seem to be archived on the Wayback Machine, this video from NewCA.com shows some of what it looked like. This campaign became part of CCA's identity, continuing through the next decade, focusing on healthy living habits from diet to exercise to media literacy. There seem to be four ads in this campaign, two of which depict this kid taking his head off, attention grabbing for sure, mildly disconcerting, also yes, these ads are head and body. In 2004, they came out with Health Rock, which features this abstract cartoon character on a t-shirt demonstrating physical activity. You got a balance, food, and activity, working together. About electricity. And I feel like the song is very much inspired by Schoolhouse Rock, another great series of educational shorts. One of the last ads produced by CCA was Media Monkey in 2010. By this point, I was already nearly done high school and never saw this one on TV myself. The message seems pretty similar to Smart As You, encouraging kids to make healthy choices about the media they consume. So now it comes down to this, my five favorite concerned children's advertisers, PSAs. And these aren't in really any particular order, just the ones that I find the most memorable. At number 5, I'm going with Hip Choice. I really like the way that this ad looks, with its colors and lighting. The puppets are fascinatingly ugly and weird, and of course there's the drug pusher. This guy must have some fans online because he's got a page on the villains wiki. Number 4, I'm looking at the house hippo. There is a ton of work that went into this ad, and there's a call to action that gets young viewers interested in learning how things like video editing work. Number 3 has got to be The Trap. I like the puppets and the scale sets, it's straight to the point with an overall good message. At number 2, you can't go wrong with Don't Put It In Your Mouth. Where I grew up, everyone knows this song, and it's almost like a big inside joke that people still reference to this day. Number 1, I'm giving it to the all-time classic What's Your Thing. Not only does it have a late 90s charm with the high contrast and wide angle shots, but I think the message here resonates the most, and not just with its target audience. This is about finding your own personal passion and identity, and I think that's still pretty powerful. And that about wraps it up. Now I mean when I say these were legendary. Almost everybody I grew up with saw them on a nearly daily basis. If you happen to grow up with the PSAs by Concerned Children's Advertisers, let me know what you thought of them back then. I'm also interested in hearing what these ads are like from people who never saw them. I feel like they were such an integral part of the media I consumed as a kid that I have a hard time imagining what it would have been like without them. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed our journey and be sure to stick around the channel because we've got some more fun stuff coming your way in the future. But for now, I will catch you next time in the world of slime.